six and a half quid a week. So you couldn't really do much. We didn't have a car or anything like that. I think there's only about three cars down our street of about 100 houses. So there was no facility for going anywhere outside of your area. We used to go to the pub a bit. We didn't have TV, of course, didn't have a radio. But they brought those, um... Can I go into details? It was called Relay Radio. And you had to pay two and six a week, and you got one of these speaker things with a, a, a volume and a, and a switch on it, which was the light program, the home service, the third program, and Radio Luxembourg. They were the four switches that took you direct onto it, you know. really was dis not had to worry about the material things because if you're if you're hungry you haven't really got much time to worry about fighting wars and whether this is right Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones courted controversy from the start Join the Stones. When I walked in to see them at the World's End, I just thought, well, oh, these are a weird bunch. Forms on stage or matching guitars or did all that show busy thing, you know, with the thumbs up and the guitars and jump off walls and, and smile at cameras and all that. We never did any of that stuff. Three, four, one. Instead, the Stones played an endless round of pubs and clubs and made no effort to impress anyone. We'd arrived ten minutes before we were due to go on, and they'd say, you're late, you haven't got time to change, and we say, we're ready. You know, where's the stage? <laughs> we used to go on the stage and play and sit on stools. Didn't take any notice of the crowd, and just have beers and smoke fags, and uh, sometimes we had our backs to the audience. <laughs> It was no sort of visual sort of uh, display there at all. Promoters, when they saw us, they just said, oh, I'll never book you lot again. Sometimes they never paid us for the gigs, you know. When you did a TV show, you know, the producers say, you, you, that bass guitarist there, get that chewing gum out of your mouth. We don't have people chewing gum on our show. And so Mick says, well, if he has to... If his chewing gum has to go out, we all go out, so you can please yourself. And then he went, oh, all right then. The parents hated it, the media hated it, and, and the kids loved it. Hello, oh, Mr. Punch. Madam Chairman, as a lifelong resident of this town, I maintain Broadstairs does not want this kind of entertainment. I'm appalled. But a guy come up to me in the pub and say, um, will you please leave this pub? I say, why? Well, I want something to eat. And he says, I don't like the way, I don't like your way of life. Those against. <laughs> the headline would be, Five awesome apes perpetrating music, musical onslaughts and things like this, you know. They look like Neanderthals. Charlie Watts looks like a horse. You know, the ugliest band. I mean, it was, it was, it was so insulting. They used to say we had fleas jumping off our heads. We smelt. We never bathed. We never washed. Just because our hair was a bit longer than the average person and we wore casual clothes. That's all it was. They never got the logic that all right, our hair's that long, but all the girls' hair is that long. But the girls are clean. We used to have a voice coach at our school. She used to hang outside the house, carve their names on the door, front door, and you couldn't go anywhere. When I mean, you couldn't go shopping, you couldn't walk down the street, and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you became almost like a prisoner. They always found ways of getting in, you know. You climb up drain pipes and get in, in 
three floors, you know. The, the lunatics, some of them. I've got to get out of London. 1968, I am looking for a house. <laughs>